Hi, today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about my meditation practice and my journey into meditation as a whole. First question, how did you come to the practice of meditation? So, for several years I've been struggling with depression and anxiety, uh, facing a lot of existential questions, having many existential crises, um, and uh, dealing with chronic pain in my back, neck, shoulders, um, specifically when I woke up each day, but the pain would often persist uh, throughout the day, especially if I wasn't paying careful attention to posture, sleeping posture or standing posture, sitting posture, walking posture, um, the pain could persist and, and could get quite bad. Um, so needless to say, there was just a lot of suffering in my life, and um, I was acutely aware of how much suffering was going on, and I felt like I needed to find release from that suffering. I wanted to, um, uh, to be free from it, or at least to create a different relationship with my suffering, and ultimately this led me down several roads of self-development um, before I finally and, and very thankfully came across meditation. I remember one day I was looking for self-development stuff on YouTube and I happened to see one of Bhante Yutadhamma's videos on walking meditation. And so I um, actually found the series that he did the intro to meditation series and I watched all six videos and um, not that night I didn't do any meditation that night but the next morning I woke up and I, I committed to doing 10 minutes of meditation so five walking and five sitting and um, I, I kind of knew right away that it was something different than than I had pictured it to be um, I wouldn't say it was transformative in any way. It was just surprising to me how how difficult it was to uh, to be with with my um, wandering mind and with the emotions that came up uh, for just, you know, 10 minutes. Um, and I think it really just kind of opened my eyes to how much uh, was inside of me that, that I maybe wasn't aware of um, or didn't understand the extent to which those feelings were there. Um, so that's how I came to the practice. Just happened to to see the YouTube videos, and very glad I did because um, I I feel like I'm a very different person um, now than when I when I first started meditating, and I have uh, the practice to thank for that, um, as well as Bhante Yutadamo and the support of of all the community at Siri Mangalo. Uh, question, the next question, how did it change your life? Um, so I guess I'll answer in terms of the practice itself. <clears throat> For me, one thing that, that I think is, has really been life changing is when during the practice, I'm able to see phenomenon arise and cease. Um, and in particular, you know, when I, especially when I first started practicing, <clears throat> there were a lot of difficult emotions that came up for me um, and a lot of uh, feelings of pain, a lot of experience of pain. And I would sit with the negative feelings or the pain for long periods of time. And I kept getting in this thought cycle that, you know, the pain was never going to go away. The negative feelings were never going to go away. But then sometimes I'd find that my mind had wandered and I'd be thinking about something else. And while I was thinking about that other thing, I'd kind of realize in hindsight, like there was no pain when I got distracted. Like my mind was taken away from the sensation of the pain. And with more practice, um, as I started to note the pain or note feelings like anger, sadness, anxiety, I would notice that after a long time, my mind would start to get kind of tired of, of these experiences, of the sensation of, of pain, and it would become disinterested. Um, after, after, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes of noting, it would 
it would really start to lose its grip um, or its attachment to um, to this form of suffering that I was creating for myself. And uh, it's just really interesting to see the mind work that way for uh, to, to, to be uh, to be in pain for a period of time and you're, you're noting pain, you're noting pain and then the next moment you realize that the pain is no longer bothering you or the pain has gone away. Um, to me, I think I think the first time I realized this, it really unlocked something for me in the rest of my life, which was that, you know, during my daily life, if I had pain in my back or if I was particularly angry, I knew that I was just, um, that I was potentially moments away from that phenomenon ceasing. And so in my daily life, if I had pain, I could note the pain and I would see it disappear, especially as I started to practice meditation more and more. And this was especially helpful for me with, um, with feelings in particular. So anxiety, um, I, would, I would note anxiety and it would go away so quickly just by uh, putting my awareness to it and noting it. And partially because I knew from experience from my, from my practice that it will go away and having the confidence that it, you know I'm going to note this and it's going to go away on its own if I note it for long enough almost in my experience made it go away faster and so um I re like I remember so many times where I, I was so angry or so anxious and just after noting it a few times I would see it completely disappear and I would almost be sitting there like unbelievably amazed at the power of of what meditation can do for your mind and for your uh your sense of like just your peace of mind um and the power that um uh that that, that my mind had before i started the meditation practice um it's it's been a really incredible uh journey for me and has touched my life in other ways but to me seeing that everything arises and ceases um, on a basic level uh, is has been life-changing for me and has helped me immensely um, just in my daily life and during the practice too. Um, next question, can you tell a story about how mindfulness served you in daily life? So going back to kind of what I was just talking about, um, there was a period of time um, about a month and a half ago, where I went through um, a breakup um, uh, in, uh, of a long-term relationship. And this was someone that I had cared about very deeply. Um, and I was very sad for the relationship to end. But what was, what was really interesting was that the breakup happened right around the time that I was meditating very deeply very consistently uh deeply for me that is so i was my practice was um at like a like a peak for my own like personal practice i was meditating more often and i felt like the quality of meditation i was um i was having was especially good around that time and so um you know you can imagine uh during a breakup there's a lot of hard feelings there's a lot of memories that come back and thoughts and um, emotions and uh, uh, j just things that are difficult to deal with. And so part of my strategy for dealing with that was I'm going to employ mindfulness um, during the day and when these thoughts come up I'm going to be mindful of them and watch them. And I, um, I remember in particular um, how, how mindfulness served me well, uh, when I was really sad. So there were period of, periods of time where I was, you know, overcome with grief, with sadness, remembering happy memories, um, maybe feeling like I wished I had done something differently. Um, all these feelings that elicited sadness in me and I would start crying, uh, pretty heavily sometimes. And <laughs> I, I laugh now because I'm, I'm still a little in shock about 
how uh, uh, about how effective this was but I would just you know I would start crying and then I would note that I would meditate and just note that I was crying and the most incredible thing happened which was that simultaneously I was able to look at that raw emotion uh, you know first the crying and then oh there's the sadness so I was able to look at that raw experience those raw emotions while also distancing myself from them. And what I mean by distancing is that when I noted crying, I realized something really strange, which was that like, although I was crying, I, it's a little hard to explain. It's like my mind was aware of it and it was somehow detached from that experience. So there was the me crying and feeling sad, but then there was the mind that was aware and uh, again, may maybe it's just hard to explain um, uh, in, in detail what that felt like, but it was almost like I felt this weird mix of like happy, not happiness, e even sometimes happiness was mixed in there, but it was definitely not your typical um, experience of, of grief. I, I'd never been able to feel so clear-minded when I was sobbing. I'd be on the floor sobbing or in my bed or something. <clears throat> but I just had this um, presence of mind that um, that was developed through meditation practice. And it's like I, I could see the sadness. I could see the crying. But, it, but I knew it wasn't me. It felt somehow different. Um, I, I'm probably doing a very poor job of explaining this, but um, all that is to say that um, meditation and mindfulness um, made a huge difference for me during the grieving process, where I was able to, I felt like grieve more healthily. I was able to, you know, and I was never afraid to look at those emotions and those feelings. Um, but at the same time, being mindful of them, I didn't ever feel overwhelmed by them. I think maybe maybe that's like what I mean by creating a sense of distance is that I spent a lot of time with these emotions, um, but I never felt like it was too much. Um, it was almost just like, I remember even now, um, it was almost just like my mind was saying like, just wait, like these emotions will pass. Like I remember not having the thought necessarily, but knowing without thinking that I've seen this before, this is gonna pass, um, which is a, an incredible, um, I guess, blessing for me to, to be able to employ mindfulness so directly in a very difficult time in my life, um, relatively shortly after I started the practice. I don't know if I had mentioned, but I've only been um, practicing for about five months and it was right around the fourth month that the breakup happened. And um, I don't know what <laughs> what kind of state I would have been in without the meditation, but I, um, it was very clear to me that it was making a huge difference and was directly applicable to other parts of my life, especially um, parts of my life that involved a lot of suffering um, and other difficult emotions. Um, so last question that I'll answer, what has been challenging about your path? Um, I don't know if there's, if I'm missing something, um, missing something more challenging, like it's escaping me right now, but I think my biggest challenge has been, <clears throat> has been doubt. Um, and that's doubt uh, in myself and doubt in the practice. And I think that comes from the fact that uh, meditation is still a fairly new practice to me, um, uh, just in the sense that there's, I think there's a lot to learn and a lot to experience, especially if one hasn't taken a formal meditation course. I did take the, um, the, the at-home online course, but I think until, <clears throat> I, I think at least for me, um, uh, until I have the chance to take a, um, 
I guess you want to call it like a like a meditation retreat. Um, I guess I've just been feeling doubt about my own practice from time to time. And uh, especially really early on, I had doubts about whether or not the practice was working for me, um, whether or not it was a good practice. Uh, and, and that doubt pretty much extinguished itself um, maybe after like the first month and a half, two months. Um, doubt in myself sometimes is still a persistent issue. And so that's something that um, is challenging for me still. And um, I think the the advice that I you know, try to give to myself that other people in the community here have given to me as well is to be patient with myself, um, to be patient with the practice, and um, to give myself, you know, understanding. Um, you know, this isn't, meditation is not a quick fix, and uh, no matter how badly you want it to be, and it, it's a long journey. Um, you know, meditation practice is, it's a lifetime commitment and uh it's 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 really a lifelong path so i think uh you know <laughs> given that i'm still early in my journey the presence of doubt is not all too su all that surprising to me especially doubt in myself um not having had taken a formal course yet um and just kind of uh approaching meditation mostly from a from a diy uh, you know, reading the meditation booklet, watching the videos, um, listening to Dhamma talks, things like that. So there is still doubt. That's a pretty big challenge for me. Um, thankfully, the farther I have progressed, uh, or just the longer that I've um, done the practice, um, the doubt has subsided slowly but surely. Um, and even even comparing myself now, like, if, if you look at the now versus the then five months ago, um, I've made pretty great leaps and leaps and bounds from, uh, from the level of doubt that I, that I was originally experiencing. So I'm thankful that, <clears throat> that over time, I've been able to uh, reassure myself about the practice and about my ability that, like, I can do this. Um, and if I'm sticking to, uh, you know, the, the booklet, that I'm doing it correctly. Um, and to also note the doubt. And if, you know, if the doubt arises, I can note it and eventually it will go away. And uh, that's also a great feeling. And helps, helps to, um, that itself helps to clear away the doubt a little bit, slowly but surely. Um... So, so that was it for me. Um, I just wanted to also take a moment to thank um, all the volunteers and even just all the community members at Sri Mangalo who have made, um, you know, my own personal journey possible. But it, it also is really touching to me to see how many others' lives are affected in a positive light um, by, uh, uh, by the practice of meditation and... Uh, the, the support of this community um, has has just been amazing. It's great to hear other people's stories and to uh, to share ideas and um, encourage each other um, in the practice because it can be difficult at times. <laughs> um, and I just also wanted to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, share my story. And I'm very much looking forward to um, to other stories that are shared as well. Sadhu.